Hi guys, welcome back to The Wargamer and another airbrushing review. Now in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Sparmax Aerism Mini Compressor. So here we have the Sparmax Aerism Compressor and you can see here it's very very small and compact. Um, it's about uh, 16 centimeters across here, about 9 centimeters in its width and about 17 centimeters tall including the handle there as well. So uh, very compact, very um, easy to store. Um, it weighs about um, two and a half kilos, about five and a half pounds there, so pretty light compared to other airbrushes, airbrush compressors as well. And on the side here we have um, the actual pressure um, knob here, turning it right uh, clockwise, it increases the pressure and then turning it left decreases it like that. There's no pressure gauge so you can't actually see how much pressure you're putting through here on the compressor itself. And you've also got the handle at the top there which has got this little hole in, which means you can just pop your airbrush in there um, when you're not using it. It acts as a little bit of a, a stand there as well, so quite a little useful feature. In addition to that you also get a hose, this braided hose here. And it's actually quite a nice hose, to be honest. Um, sometimes you get those really thin, plasticky ones with rubber hoses, and I do quite prefer these um, kind of braided ones as well. I just feel like they're a bit protected a little bit more, and they don't get tangled up as, as easily as well. So it's nice to see a little hose that we've got in here. So that's the compressor itself. Let's hook up an airbrush and see how it performs. So here we have the Sparmax Max 4 airbrush that I looked at in the previous video, and this is connected to the Sparmax uh, compressor. And one of the things I want to point out is the fact that the, the compressor doesn't actually have a reservoir, which means that if you actually uh, want to be using it, it always has to be on, and even when you're not actually passing air through the airbrush, um, the compressor will actually still be running. So for example, if I turn it on now, I won't actually press down the air button, but you can hear that the airbrush, uh, the compressor is still working. So no air is actually going through the airbrush, and even when I turn it on, it carries on. And the air's going through, and then if I let go, the compressor's still going. So if I turn it off now, we, we still get a little bit of air left in um, the pipe itself, but as soon as that runs out, that's it then. Now if I bring in comparison, um, this is my Awater airbrush, which is connected to me, my Awater uh, Studio compressor. Now the compressor is actually already on. It's built up a little bit of pressure and it's uh, storing that in its reservoir, so when I press this button you'll notice um, air will come out and then the compressor will kick in. So you can see there the compressor kicks in and as soon as I let go of the button it builds up the pressure but again and then it cuts off, which means that you're not always having the compressor running in the background, which is a, a nice feature on these more expensive compressors, but for this one it's a little bit, um, can be a little bit awkward sometimes if you've always had to turn off um, the compressor on and off all the time, but it's not such a huge problem. So let's see how the actual brush sprays. Now I've got a little bit of uh, green paint in my airbrush here, so let's just turn on the compressor and uh, start at roughly about 30 psi. So you can see straight away, we've got quite uh, a nice atomization there of the paint. Well, let's just get a fairly th thin line with this 0.4 millimeter airbrush. And if I just uh, reduce the pressure, you can see we've got much more of a kind of a finer mist being created and if I slowly increase the pressure you can see we've got a good range of pressure there. So this particular brush only has a maximum pressure of 30 psi but really that's probably all you need. You can see here we've got quite a, a nice range, we've got the, the very fine here and the low pressures right up to uh, the 30 psi just around the circle here. So it gets um, a lot more thicker depending on what kind of effect you want. If you want quite a nice light dusting you've got um, a possibility of that and if you want a, a much more of a, an even coverage you can just go for the higher pressures. So that was my review of the Sparmax Mini Compressor, and overall it's not a bad little compressor, especially if you're a beginner. And let's face it, that's probably what it's been targeted at. I mean, you've got a few of the features that are stripped out, you've got no reservoir, for example, which means that even if you're not passing air through the airbrush itself, you're going to be hearing it in the background, it's going to be humming away, which can get a little bit annoying, and it also means that you're going to have to keep manually remembering to turn it off if you don't want to hear it. But it is only £99, which is really a bargain for a compressor. A lot of compressors out on the market are about 300 quid. Um, when you can actually pick up this compressor, the Sparmax airbrush I looked at in the last video, plus paint, plus accessories for less than 200 quid, which really fantastic for people who are just starting out. People who don't know if they want to invest a lot of money into airbrushing straight away because they haven't really done it before. But I mean, there are the drawbacks to it, which is, explains why it is so cheap. Um, you've got no pressure gauge on there, you don't know really how much um, pressure you're sending through your airbrush, for example. Um, and also the fact that you can only have it running for about half an hour before having to let it cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes between 
um, each use, which can prove a little bit annoying if you've got a large area or a lot of miniatures that you want to get primed or base coated, it can eat into your airbrushing time a little bit. But overall that's kind of swings and roundabouts really, you get a cheap compressor which is brilliant for beginners but there are obviously a few limitations and if you want to expand on your airbrushing then you're probably best investing in uh, something a little bit more pricey. So what I'll do is I'll pop a link in the description below which will take you directly to airbrushes.com where you can pick up one of these Sparmax air, um, compressors as well as the airbrush I looked at in the previous video um, for £99. It really is very cheap uh, for a compressor like I said, like I keep going on about. Um, and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest reviews. Um, I'm continuing this airbrushing series so I'll be looking at some uh, cleaners and um, different paints as well in the future so do uh, stay tuned for those and until next time thanks for watching and goodbye